okay hello guys hello teacher now i'm going to give you my explanation about composition mapping well as you can see as you can observe i have uh divided in four groups well first i'm going to be explaining what is compositional semantics and then i'm going to explain the semantic rule in a general way as uh, so now we're going to have i'm going to specify you the rules number one and number two then we're going to be um have a brief uh, introduction about when compositionality goes angry and la the last one is about anomaly metaphor and idioms that is as a branch of this or is as part of this okay let's start with this what is compositional semantic what comes to your mind when you listen the word compositional semantic well in my case when I listen it, I just imagine that uh, compositional semantic is is a um, branch of linguistics and is about how does lexical meanings are combining to form more complex phrase and meanings. The meanings of a phrase is determined by combining the meanings of its subphrases by using, of course, rules which are driven by the synthetic structure. This is in order to have a better idea of the speaker's knowledge of truth, entailment, and ambiguity, based on the capacity to create uncountable number of sentences. Why uncountable number of sentences? Because we know that as human beings, we are so creative. This is the part, creativity. Um, the capacity to create the uncountable number of sentences and we're able to do it uh, and this helps uh, and this is there is where compositional semantic help us to create those uncountable amounts right then we there then we have semantic rules okay according to fromke he makes the reference about the importance of semantic rules. What is the importance? Is because the function of these rules combine the meanings of words into meaningful phrases. What an important is this? Okay, we have the example Jack swims, right? In this example, Jack is appreciated as a proper as a proper name. And also we know that Jack is a name of a person or an animal. Well, I mean, I don't want to say that Jack is an animal, right? But I, the main point is that in the sentence is referring to an individual of the world. While swims is a verb composed, which composed the sentence. And according to the semantic rule, this is correct. Why? Because, um, okay, there, then we have their rules, right? The rules, okay, we have the rule number one. Okay, this rule states that a sentence composed of a subject, noun phrase, and a predicate, verb phrase, is true if the subject refers to an individual who is among the members of the set that constitutes the meaning of the verb phrase. Well, what I can understand about this very short paragraph about the number rule is that the rule number one states that a sentence is, of course, composed of a subject. A sentence is always going to have a subject and a predicate. Okay. And this is going to be true just if the subject is referring to an individual who is between the members of the set that comes to the meaning of the verb phrase. Okay. We have an example that is you. 
Holy dances. This sentence is a true for me. This sentence is true for me because I because I know that Julie is my niece, is my very beautiful niece, and I know that uh, that Julie dances very very well. Okay, the main point of this is that I know who is Julie. That's why. The example Julie dances is true for me. Okay, the book then the book gave us um another example that Jack kills Laura. Uh, well, as you can see here, well, here is we have Julie that is the noun phrase and dances that is the verb phrase. The noun phrase with the verb phrase makes a sentence. Voila. And then here we have a very big problem, right? But it, it, it is not like that. Because we have Jack kiss Laura. As you can observe, we have two noun phrases. Okay, what we are going to do here is that Laura, we're going to see that Laura is the noun phrase and this is the verb of the sentence. When we join the verb with verb phrase, with the noun phrase, I'm sorry, we're going to get a we're going to get a verb phrase. Well, as here, here dances is a verb phrase. And we take the verb phrase with the jack that is the noun phrase and we join it in, and we when we join again the verb phrase with with the, the noun phrase, we get a sentence, right? And the rule number two is that the meaning of verb phrase, verb noun phrase, is the set of individuals X such that X is the first member of any year in the meaning of those second member is the meaning of noun phrase. Okay, we have the same example provided by the by the the book Jack kissed Laura. This example shows that Jack um is the subject of the sentence and Laura is another uh subject, but then Jack is the one who makes the action and Laura is the one who receives the action. Kissed is the verb and the example. So the example is okay. But if we replace, if we change the sentence, the, 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 the name of Mary or the name of Laura, I'm sorry, for the name of Mary is not correct because the one who received the kiss was Laura, not Mary. Because who kissed was Jack, right? And this is about who, okay, the important point here is who makes the action and who re receives the action. Okay, then we have where compositionality is angry. This is a headache, right? Because we sometimes we don't really know about this, but it is is sometimes we face with some words that doesn't have a literal meaning of these words can be confused even for the native speakers or professional poets or even professional poets. Can you imagine that? Um, which is very weird. This is because when we face to a new word or a word that we don't know the exactly meaning uh, inside of a sentence, right? we don't make the relation that we used to do. As for example, when we know the meaning of a word or of a sentence and we listen in, listen it quickly, you are, we are going to uh, make the relation between the meaning of the word. Okay. 
It explains us that when compositional lyric goes angry is when we face an anomalous sentence with semantic violations and others uninterpretable. Well, an example of this is that this has happened almost, I am going to say that for almost everybody has happened this um, in a time, right? Sometime, because even in the Spanish, we are native speakers of Spanish, but we have faced some words, well, in my case it is, we have faced some words that um, we don't really know the meaning, but this is um, so word for us because this is our native language, but we don't know that meaning. And that is when we face an anomalous sentence or an anomalous uh, a semantic violation, it, it is because we don't are re related with that kind of sentences. Okay. For this, to understand that is, we are going to mention those, those, I, I don't know how to call them, uh, um, group of words, maybe I can say it. Okay. We have those group of words. This is this really helps to a situation to uh, when compositionality goes angry. Okay, we have first anomaly. What is anomaly? Anomalous sentence is when a um, group of words which can be pretty understandable, we can have a sentence which is grammatically correct and it respects the subject, the verbs, the adjectives, and so on. But at the end, it can be, it can be synthetically correct, incorrect, I'm sorry. Anomaly sentence, that's an, an anomaly sentence. Okay, we have this, is, this example that is colorless. Colorless green ideas sleep furiously. Can you imagine a colorless green? The green is color, not it's colorful green, not colorless. So this is like contradicting the, the same idea. Okay. And then, then we have the metaphor. A metaphor I this is uh, more um more familiar for us because we have seen it before. Um a metaphor is something for regard regarded as representative or symbolic to something as special when it's something when it's, it is something abstract the metaphor arrives to create a metaphorical expression and we have this um sentence time is money oh my gosh how many times our grandfathers or grandmothers have told us this when we are maybe procrastinated procrastinating our time and they say time is money well and as the last one is we have idioms that are words that doesn't have a directly translatable meaning that is what this means that we can encounter some idiomatic phrases that we are not going to know or we are not going to predict their meaning to be based on an individual and the and we have those two examples drop the ball and put it out okay guys this has been everything of my participation of compositional semantics thank you for watching and bless you blessings okay bye guys take care a lot and behave and so on.